I love Walk Hard, Dewey Cox story. Great, great movie. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Lissography. It's time for side three of The Doors week. And when talking about The Doors, you got to thank Val Kilmer right off the bat, right? It's the first thing you think about is Val Kilmer, not Jim Morrison or any of the songs. I don't know if there's ever been a better visual casting of someone in a film than Val Kilmer playing Jim Morrison in Oliver Stone's early 90s classic, The Doors. But it brings to mind, um, we're just going to shoot the shit a little bit about some good music movies, um, non-fiction only, biopics, whatever you want to call it. There have been several out in the last few years. I've got a bunch of favorites, um, but Joe, what are, what are some of yours? Probably my favorite all time is Ray, which came out in 2004. Jamie Foxx does a very convincing Ray Charles. Thought it was a good movie, you know. It's one of those movies that, you know, I don't know that much about Ray Charles, so. It was an interesting movie. They got the, you know, the performance was Dynamite by Fox. Uh, I don't know if he sang the songs. I don't think he did. Uh, I think it was just lip synced. But uh, strong, strong performance there. Strong movie. That was kind of during the, the salad days of the, the biopic of famous artists. I think it was around the same time as Walk the Line. And there's probably some other ones. There's one about... Um, Kurt Cobain, probably around the same time. I guess it was like a, a period of people making movies about artists. It seems to go in and out of fashion. We had- My favorite performance of all time has got to be Kate Blanchett doing a very young 60s Bob Dylan with the Ray-Bans and the All Black, and she just absolutely nails it. She was robbed of the Academy Award that year. She plays it perfectly. Like, there's that one scene that's, like, famous on YouTube and is in a couple documentaries where he's really stoned and kind of going like this, and he's reading that sign in the alleyway and being like, I want a barber who does this, and whatever he's doing. But she, like, emulated that for the entire film and doing the Heymans and talking with Allen Ginsberg and all that. It's great. Um, and you were talking about Walk the Line, which I really liked, and I wasn't a big Johnny Cash fan until I saw that movie. And it's interesting to know that he and Reese Witherspoon did the vocal performances themselves in Walk the Line, which makes it even that more impressive. Um, so Walk the Line is up there for me as well. There are some bad ones, though. I didn't really like the new Elton John one, Rocket Man. It made no sense to me, to be honest. Did you see it? Yeah, I mean, I kind of liked it. I don't know how much I liked the way they did it with... We were talking about this pre-show. He didn't write the lyrics, but the movie's about, you know, it's it's like the, he's singing the songs about what's happening, but the things he's singing about, he didn't write. So, it, you know, this is like discombobulation. He did sing the songs out, which is cool. Karen Egerton, which is neat. I always like when artists do that. But, you know, you got to think Elton John's life is interesting enough to just go with a, a biopic or something, you know. Gotta be. He's a really interesting dude. Why not just lean into that? And, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody came out around the same time. You know, Rami Malek... Very convincing, Freddie Mercury, great casting. But the problem with with some of these movies is that, you know, the remaining band members have too much control over what goes on in the movie. So they're going to take out the interesting parts, the controversial parts. They, I, I felt like they made Freddie Mercury kind of out to be the bad guy a little bit. Maybe he was, but maybe he wasn't, you know. I want to see something kind of more real. Probably didn't get that with Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, the problem with Bohemian Rhapsody, it's just way too soft around the edges. Um, And, you know, it's just way too glamorized and neutered. And, you know, he talks about how the partying is really affecting his life, but you really hardly see it. Other than the really um, well-crafted, you know, big concert at the end, it, it just didn't really grip me. Although his performance is really, really good. Um, there's some other good ones. Um, I like The Runaways is a good movie. I can't remember which, there's one where, um, I think it's Aaron Johnson plays a young John Lennon. I can't really remember what that is. Let me look that mm. up real 
Did not see that one. Did you ever see Jersey Boys? Yeah, I don't know what Clint Eastwood was doing directing Jersey Boys. Now, does your opinion of movies, movies like this, rest on the fact that you like a band or doesn't don't like a band? No, it doesn't have to be someone that I like. Like it's, it can be whatever, just as long as it's a good film. But I feel like, well, like we were talking about with Bohemian Rhapsody and um, Rocket Man, is sometimes it's just way too soft. It's too soft. Like these are people that go through some really painful vicious times in their life and it just kind of just gets washed over a little bit the the one movie that didn't kind of do that was it's interesting because the band's still alive and they pretty much had total control was the dirt the motley crew one and that was pretty you know i feel like that was probably pretty accurate the way the band really was they kind of just went for it and maybe it was just because Molly Crew's kind of been out of the spotlight and they wanted to, you know, get some pub. But I, I feel like that was a, a pretty raunchy kind of no holds barred adaptation, you know, of really what happened. You know, it's based on his book. So they're shooting heroin and, you know, just being terrible people the whole time. And that's kind of what I want to see. And I, don't, I don't care that much about Molly Crew, but that's kind of what I wanted to see from, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody and, some of these other movies about these famous rock stars. Yeah. Uh, the one about young John Lennon was Nowhere Boy with Aaron Taylor Johnson um, from 2009, which was okay. But the big problem is this isn't the part of John Lennon's life I really want to see. So to me, it didn't really need to be made. The other one um, I was thinking of that I, to me is the best example of just blowing an opportunity to make a really good dirty, grimy, realistic music star biopic is uh, Great Balls of Fire from the late 80s with um, Dennis Quaid. Like, I don't know what Scorsese was doing at the time. I think he just got done making Last Temptation of Christ, but The Killer, come on. Like, you could have made, like, for his time especially was, he was like the loose cannon. Like, people were afraid to go near him. That would have been awesome. But instead, they made it like this quirky 50s, like, marriage drama between him and his cousin and really just ruined an opportunity. And it makes his you know his portrayal of him just kind of this lame impression rather than really getting into the role so anyway if anyone else has any other um you know movies about rock stars or musicians pop artists that they would uh like to chime in on or maybe some ideas of ones that should be made with certain actors i know if they ever did rush um a young adrian brody probably would have been perfect for getty lee but it is what it is and you know neil parrot looks like a perfect mix of tom hanks and kevin spacey um just right down the middle to me so we'll see um let us know what you're thinking in the comments below don't forget to like subscribe um hit the bell for notifications um, we got some good stuff coming up soon. Soon we will get to Super Tramp, which seems to be the winner of our most recent poll. And then once we get that one in the works, we'll have another poll up for you guys to pitch in and see what uh, you want us to rank next. So thanks again for watching, and we will see you next time on Listography. Listography.